Willkommen, bienvenue, and hello. Welcome to part two of how to properly refinish a chair. So last week we spray painted and I showed you guys the fabric that we were taking inspiration from. So this week, the much simpler half of the task is recovering the chair. So first, there are a couple things that you're going to need to accomplish the job. First is the fabric, like I showed you this awesome print last week. The second, you're going to need something to staple the fabric to the chair bottom. So I would suggest a manual staple gun like this one by Stanley, uh, which I bought at Walmart. I was desperate, all right? I had to go to Walmart that day. <laughs> So, to load your staple gun, you're going to need staples. So, for the Stanley brand, they've been very clever and they have color-coded the type of staples that you need for your specific staple gun. So mine happens to be the green gun, which by looking at it, you wouldn't be able to tell that you would need to buy the green box, but it's just something you've got to pay attention to when you buy it the first time. So you're also going to need a pair of scissors to cut the fabric to the right size because obviously the fabric is not going to be the size that you need it right from off the bat. Next, you will need a hammer for hammering because sometimes the staple does not properly dislodge from the gun, so you have to give it a couple extra taps. Any hammer will do. Maybe even a stiletto heel or I don't know your friend's head something and finally whenever I'm working I like to have a box of band-aids nearby uh, in case of any accidents like if you staple through your finger or if you bang your finger with a hammer um, or whatever else might come up while you're working so it's always good to have a box nearby all right so the first step like I said, is to cut your fabric piece to the size that you're going to need it. And when you're doing this, the other good thing to think about is what fabric you want on what part of the chair. Like, do you want this section or this section? Uh, also, if it's like a pattern that's very geometric, you might want to consider centering it on your chair so it looks purposeful. Like if I were to recover the chair with these curtains, I might want one of the birds in the middle or something. I don't know. First, is lay out the fabric. Place the chair on the fabric, just like that. Now when you do this, keep in mind that the fabric needs to wrap around to the bottom so you can staple it to the underside of the chair so there are no staples showing. So I would say leave about, depending on the thickness of your chair, of course, for mine, I'm going to leave about an inch and a half of fabric all the way around so that I can wrap it properly. Your scissors and you cut it. All right, so now you've cut your fabric. You've got it the size that you need it for your chair seat. Um, so the next step, really the only step left is to begin stapling. I didn't do this very well the last time I covered this chair, clearly. All right, so you might be wondering why I'm not removing the fabric that is already on the chair from it, and to be quite frank, part of it is because I am lazy, and the other part is because you don't need to, because who cares? So what you're going to want to do is just fold one edge over, and the important thing when you're starting to do this is that you want to start in the middle with your staple gun. So press it down. And just like that, a staple comes out. And then after you've put one staple in the center of one side, you're going to want to flip it around and start from the opposite side and pull it taut or tight. Um, and do the same thing. Drop a staple right in the middle. So then looking back on the back, what you can start to do now is on either side that you've started from, you're going to start to work from the center to the corners. Um, this is because if you get any bubbles in the fabric or any wrinkles, you can work them out to the corner and then just kind of fold the fabric to hide it. So kind of think of it like, I know everyone has that chair in their bedroom that just sits in the corner that you put all your clothes on, things like that. Think of it like this. You want to work all the dirt into the corner, under the rug, 
and away from uh, the center of the room so you can walk around. All right, so after you've done that, after you've got the two sides attached with the staples, and I would suggest putting staples about maybe inch and a half to two inches or so. You really don't need that many, to be honest. Um, and it's always good to not be wasteful. So once you've done uh, the two opposite sides, you're going to want to just basically repeat that on the two sides that still need to be done. All right, so now the four sides are pretty much done. You can really see that the chair is starting to take shape here. Um, and now basically you just have to work the four corners down. So like I said, um, this is where you just kind of have to got to cleverly fold the, ch uh, the fabric um, just so that it gives you a nice clean edge from the front so that you really can't see any wrinkles or anything. Um, depending on the shape of the chair is going to depend on how you fold the fabric as well as how thick your fabric is. Um, this is actually quite simple, just a little fold like the corner of a package and then just drop in some staples to hold it in place boom, boom, boom. and then there you go you have one corner done so basically just work around the chair and uh, finish the other four corners stapling just like you did on the first one and, uh, and that's pretty much it and then in just a few short moments you have a recovered chair, and you can feel accomplished for the day. Isn't that amazing? Um, I think it looks pretty darn snazzy, I'd say. Just wipe off all the stuff that was on the table, last night's dinner, or whatever. Um, and then, that's pretty much it. Then all you have to do is just reattach the seat to the chair, and it will be ready for the finest bums around. Maybe even fit for a queen, dare I say. If nothing else, at least a Pippa. Alright, so before we unveil the final product, let's take one look back and reminisce about how this chair looked when we started. And now, drum roll, please. Voila, here she is. So we have respray painted the chair in a nice high gloss white and our black and white fabric on the chair looks positively fantastic. All right, so after you have dropped in a couple screws and remounted the chair seat to the chair frame, that about wraps this project up and this chair is ready to go. Don't forget you can find me on Facebook or Twitter, backslash Joe Dill Designs. Um, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Um, you can also check out my website at joedilldesigns.com for more simple projects like these on my blog and just to stalk me and all that awesome stuff. Go forth and be fabulous.